Hello everyone and welcome back to the Brightworks and another match of Beyond All Reason. Today, spawning on the southern side of Cilia and Charybdis and representing the red team as a yellow commander for some reason. A little bit of a mix up right there. A commander that goes by the name of Lone Wolf 1. Gonna be showing us what he's got. Wow, it's uh... Oh wait, hold on. What, what flag is that? Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> Forgot this isn't a regular lobby, I can't check it out. Anyways, uh, a lot of people from the same place in the world. Feel free to check the comment section where I'm sure somebody has put it down there. Do I take a chance and guess and get it wrong or do I just leave it be? I think I'll just leave it be all the way on the other side of the map. Hailing from the Pirates of the Caribbean, a commander we all know and love. The Cortex Commander in blue, who goes by the name of Hornet. Gonna be showing us what they've got here as a Cortex Commander instead of their well-famed Legion. No balance pack, says uh, Hornet. It's a rough game ahead. A vast ye land lovers. Apparently there's a rough game ahead without the balance pack enabled. Should be some interesting stuff to see what these commanders get down to. Now, I saw this while scanning through the replays of the Beyond All Reason server. In case you're wondering what I do in my free time, 90% of the time you'll catch me scanning through there to try and find interesting replays. But oftentimes I also check the Brightworks Discord channel, which I'll take a second to acknowledge there is a link to down below in the description section where you can go join up and submit your replays in case you have a really epic game of Beyond All Reason and you'd like to see it cast here. Anywho, who's going to send the first unit out on the field? I'm kind of waiting, stalling for time, waiting for a unit. There we go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Unin, the purple commander, has built the first ticks of the game. And this is about as aggressive as it gets. All right. Well, you know, one thing I can certainly say for sure is that I haven't spoiled these games for myself. I just thought it sounded interesting, thought it looked interesting. We don't get a chance to look at Cilia and Charybdis all too often, so I think it might be an interesting look. There we go. A couple of ticks running across the map right here for Ivan Wadsworth. And it looks like finally we're going to reach out in the dark to try and find each other. Let me switch over to the player view to highlight and emphasize exactly what I mean by that. Neither of these teams aware of exactly where the enemy is. I mean... Specifically speaking, broadly speaking, everybody knows, you know, they're up there, or they're down there, but nobody actually aware of the exact positions of either commander. I think this will be the first time that we actually spot one of the enemy commanders for the blue team, and it's going to be the brown commander. And what that should say immediately is that they have one of their lower skill players on this side. It should be the side that we push in. Now, that may seem a bit rude. <laughs> Bullying the new guy, right? But it is, tactically speaking, at the very least, a good idea. Right? Take their take their weak point and try to apply as much pressure to that as possible. And then try to capitalize on whatever advantage you can. That's that's the general idea. Not personal, just strategic. A couple of grunts moving forward right here. Alright. Defensive reaction from Marty67 has forced out quite a couple of grunts. There are still some ticks running by though. Ooh, we're not paying attention. Not paying attention. The ticks are running into the backline right here. It looks like they're gonna find a metal extractor. Luckily, probes, the maroon commander, will notice these ticks. Oh, come on. Oh no. APM issues all over the place. <laughs> Definitely a lower skill game, so we're being a little bit less judgmental, less critical than we would be of, say, for instance, some of those 30 and 40 true skill pros that are well known for being able to micro 100 grunts on the front line, build an eco in the back line, and still have APM to spare to taunt you in the chat. Pretty impressive stuff, but not who we're dealing with here. So we'll let little things like that slide. Still painful, though. Still painful. It looks like one of these pawns will manage to slip by the, the watchful gaze of Hornet here. There we go, getting into the back line. Gonna find an LLT, but we're very low on power right now. That wind speed is not being kind to the blue commander as well as, well, virtually any of these commanders. Okay, mine layer. Well, okay, that's probably not a very efficient trade, actually. I was gonna say it's it's well and good that we managed to shut that pawn down, but there are reinforcements continuing to run by, so this is starting to look very desperate right now for everybody on the blue team, at least on the right-hand side, as we scramble forces together to try and get this all up and running. Oh, Resbot's going to try and pick that back up, but the pawns are going to find it. Yeah, very nice pickoff right there from the Tan Commander. Managing to get the pawn as well as the Metal Extractor and the Mine Layer. Shutting all that down early does mean that it's going to be a fabulous start right here for the red team on the right-hand side. Indeed, you can see the Commander already pushed pretty far forward, capturing tons of those Metal Extractors. Very lovely stuff. Grunt's paralyzed here. Only for a minute. Looks like we, doesn't have, we, do, <laughs> we doesn't have Brightworks learning English all over again. The, uh... Language I speak and took many years of schooling for. Apparently I don't even know how to speak it after all. The grunt's paralyzed here on the front. It looks like we don't have the EMP rework enabled, which would uh, stun these units slowly over time, and then eventually they would remain stunned for a little bit. Not going to be the case this game. All said and done, though, 
I think I like the position here for the red team just a little bit better. You can sort of imagine if there was a halfway mark, I hit tab here to view this, sort of right along this line. And the red team is definitely denying the metal extractors of the blue team while managing to claim their metal extractors for themselves. Lone Wolf 1 gathering the metal extractors down here. Very, very good to see. 1.8s, but worth every penny. Shuriken here have gotten immense value, paralyzing whatever they can. Always lovely to see that. Fighters here are going to discover, though, that because we were playing with so many Shuriken, there's actually not a lot of air support here. Yeah. Could definitely mean... Oh, let me clear the map there. Pardon me. Could definitely mean that we go for some bombers early on. A couple of anti-air towers forced out right here from the Brown Commander. It's one of the risks of moving those fighters in early as it prompts anti-air from basically everyone. Makes scouting really, really difficult here. How has the scouting been for the blue team? Uh, so-so. We sort of know where the Maroon Commander is, roughly, and we kind of know where every frontliner is, but no scouting information on the back line here. How about for the red? Take a look right now. Uh, okay, yeah, similarly, if not worse, scouting information for the red team. We know where the Green Commander is, and we kind of know where the blue, Seafoam Green, purple, multiple purples, blue. Now, I will say, as well, as far as front lines go, the blue team has a lot more players contributing right here. You can see both of these outside players, the Seafoam Green player and the Purple Commander, both contributing forces right here. I suppose that's evenly matched against the Pink Commander and the Yellow Commander over on the left-hand side, but Corbon up in the air does mean that the Tan Commander is going to be one versus two over here on the right-hand side. That's offset somewhat by the fact that Hornet is distracted by this group of grunts and pawns and all sorts of other stuff moving forward right here for the Brown and Pink Commander. But as soon as attention is pulled this way, yeah, I'm not sure if these Rocketeers want to do this because this is going to divert the attention and suddenly... Hornet might just realize, hey, wait a second, there's actually only one commander playing over here. You are killing us, cries out Hornet. Yeah, I think I'd have to agree. Face Gravy definitely in a position to apply a lot more pressure right here. As long as these pawns are continuing to apply pressure, we really need Rocketeers here. That's going to be the ideal solution to this problem. But as long as we have some sort of pressure applied right here to the Tan Commander, this is definitely an opportunity path. Another big opportunity path is down this, this divot right here and up into the back line. You can see a couple of pawns running through there, a couple of tanks. Anything that manages to get into the back line right there has easy access to one, two, three, four, five, six of the metal extractors right here for the tank commander. Could definitely do a whole lot of damage. So interesting emphasis on the mines right here. We've seen these in a couple of the games recently, the uh, the landmines being very, very useful. It's cool to see, see them being utilized more often than not. Sometimes they're very picky, <laughs> for lack of a better word. They're very... You know, they're, they're hit or miss, I guess, is a, a better way of putting that. Sometimes they make a huge difference and they make a massive connection. Other times they just sit there the entire game and you never actually get any value from them. They end up draining hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of metal eventually over the course of a game. Tricky to quantify. Certainly into the early and mid game, though, any amount of landmine trading you can get done is going to be worth it. Tricky little situation coming up over here. Yeah, we're thinking about starting up a beamer turret. We're starting up some LLTs. All good stuff, all powerful stuff. Going to be great for dealing with those Rocketeers here. But I think units are going to be more important. Yeah, I mean, we've got the Rocketeers firing away, so... That is to say that we have the units on the field. We're going to a little bit of Miss Micro from the Brown Commander. And eventually, eventually, the Green Rocketeers are going to start firing away. We've uh, gone full wall, great wall over here on the left-hand side. We're going to just start porking up like a madman. Aggra ag aggravator, Agitator coming up right here. Always get those two mixed up. And it'll start firing away eventually. Not that that wall is too much of a disincentive, though. I mean, you can imagine one D-gun clears away enough of that that it's probably not going to be well worth too much. Face Gravy D-gunning down one of these laser turrets over here. That's what the Rocketeers are for, though. Forward radar towers and then a couple of Rocketeers make this very, very viable. Agendor holding the line. Valiantly trying to hold the line against two forces simultaneously. Ivan Wadsworth, whoa, fly in front of me, caught it. There we go. Ninja-like reflexes coming out. I know you didn't see anything, but I promise you. Uh, what was I talking about? I'm so impressed that I just did that. I just completely threw my train of thought off. Uh, I guess I love the Beamer Turret. How about that? <laughs> Beamer Turret instantly gaining value right here. One of the key aspects of the Beamer Turret is, of course, that it can outrange these Rocketeers. Oh, which we are waddling directly into the enemy line. Oh, no. A miss rally right here from the Brown Commander. It looks like it will be fixed here eventually. But losing a couple of those units for effectively free definitely hurts a little bit. Pawns moving forward now, trying to jump on top of these Rocketeers. More importantly than anything, though, just sussing out exactly what's available over here. They're going to find all those thugs, and that is inconvenient. Definitely a pain to spot all those. Good to know that they're there. Medium tank, well, I guess mostly an incisor tank rush by. Uh, 
Okay, getting a metal extractor. I think we need a little bit more, but that medium tank isn't quite killed. I think if we can kill two more metal extractors, it's probably well justified. We'll get one. Nicely done. Grunt coming in to save the day. One laser blast at a time. And I think with that grunt, this will be well cleaned up. Nicely done over here. Slowly but surely, we're applying the pressure needed in order to break this line. Ooh, Rocketeer's caught a little bit. Okay, commander in place right there. Nicely done by face gravy. Good micro there. Again, we're now facing two players on one. So this is the problem with applying that pressure, right? Suddenly now Hornet is looking in this direction and realizing, hey, wait a second. We actually only have one commander here. Big fighter pull. My goodness. Massive fighter pull. No, oh, there are bombers. All right, beautiful. Bombers headed across the map right here. Fighters will scout the red player's base. This is also the air player, so this is a key player to take out of the game right here. Oh, this is a beautiful play. Oh, okay, we missed. <laughs> um, we need to spread these out. We do not need to drop six bombers on a single wind turbine here. Spreading these out would be a much better option. I don't hate it though. You can do that by hitting A and then right-click and dragging, by the way, in case you're curious, in case there's anybody out there curious how to do that. Okay, we need to take out the air player, though. You can see effectively keeping the air player down here because the fighters can't even get off the launch pad without being blown to smithereens right now. Ah, you know what? I mean, the bombers are doing good work. They're blowing apart this base right here. Denying any more reinforcements for the tan commander means whatever's on the field is whatever's going to be it. Okay, we need the bombers to move on. This target has been well exhausted. Ah, I think we I think we focused a little too long on the tank commander. I think moving on and trying to bomb down the air player probably would have been a better option here. Light anti-air eventually cleaning all this up. Slowly, but very, very surely. There we go. Now a couple of those bombers do switch target and change on to the red player. Not bad. Not bad. Certainly knocking the tank commander out of commission for at least a little bit here. Going to mean that this front line collapses in a little ways. Always happy to see that happen. Rocketeers going to slowly start blasting this apart. My goodness, we do have quite a few, though. Yeah, 26 Rocketeers. We could be way more aggressive. <laughs> Takes about five Rocketeers to break down LLTs pretty quickly. Uh, 26 of them. We should be on a tirade right now, pushing forward as aggressively as humanly possible. Face Gravy may be worried about Micro in the back or something. Some reason or another not being aggressive with these Rocketeers, but they need to go, go, go. Little pawn run by right here, I suppose. The Tan Commander trying to find whatever value he can and does actually manage to find a nice little run by path. Yeah, this could be a huge opportunity. Couple of pawns moving forward. How many do we have in total? 13 pawns. It's definitely a sizable force. Good enough at the very least to tear down a T1 facility. Self D. Self D on the LLT. I doubt it. <laughs> now, that self D on the LLT is a proper high level move. Oh, it won't go down. Okay. Well, LLT staying alive is a little bit of a blunder right there. Loads of pawns falling as well. Oh, we're going to use the bombers defensively. Ooh, it gets me a little worried every time I see that right next to a bunch of wind turbines. Beamer turret comes up, but eventually, yeah, those pawns tire themselves out by just running too close to those explosive wind turbines. And this is exactly what I was expecting over here. A bunch of Rocketeers moving forward. There's not going to be any way of doing anything about this. Not without some units on the field. There we go. Rocketeer's finally firing. Geothermal goes down near instantaneously as those rockets collide with it. That is a massive, massive T1 army moving forward right here. What do we have to deal with this? Carbon either needs to make a transition right now, yesterday, or we need to see some units diverted over to the right-hand side. We have a fat boy going that direction. Fat boy's great. We actually have two fat boys going that direction. Fat boy's great, especially against T1. However, incredibly slow. It'll be there in about three to five business days. Definitely not enough time to save the poor Tan Commander. This left-hand side is looking a little bit better. Big old metal graveyard over here on the left-hand side. Incisors, lashers, medium tanks, uh, what are those called? Brutes, that's right. All trying to move forward here, but unless you dive the entire army on there, it's not a particularly fast composition to break things with, which does make this a little bit awkward because already the right-hand side has suffered so much pain. If you don't make a move right now, you're going to lose the advantage, and it's GG. Big old bombing run coming along on the left-hand side now. Love that we're switching it up over here. Obviously, the right-hand side is going to have way more anti-air now that we've bombed the ever-living hell out of everybody on that side. However, yeah, I like the little switch up over here, moving it into the, this, this direction. And we do have a flak turret, so we need to make this initial bombing run count as much as possible. 
All right, we uh, instead chose to bomb a single target here. Yeah, okay. A little bit less than ideal, but still glad to see a little bit of aggression coming out from the air commander. And T2 has effectively pushed these Rocketeers back. Still don't know if maybe we could have been a little more aggressive right here. But this is an opportunity, certainly, for the Seafoam Green Commander to start eating this army. You can see nearly 6,000 metal worth of T1 right here. Not going to trade nearly as effectively against T2 as it would have against its T1 counterparts. It means that it's about time to start thinking about maybe swapping it out here. Still useful. But would be much more viable as T2. Hornet, indeed, has decided to go for T2 here using the advantage of his teammate, the relative safety, to push back. The fat boy getting a nice connection right there. Yeah, there we go. Spitting in the face of the commander face gravy. And there we go. Beautifully done. <laughs> the fat boy definitely one of the units of all time. Beautiful. Beautiful connection right there. That's exactly what I'm talking about. All that T1, nearly 6,000 metal worth of T1 completely down the drain because of a single T2 unit. You can imagine, 6,000 T2 is roughly, I want to say, 10 hounds, something like that. Or in Tiger Tanks, it's about, uh, ooh, maybe 12, 14 of those. It's a lot. It's a lot. Doesn't matter, though. Medium Tanks have pulled through. That ball of medium tanks that have been slowly building in the middle of the map finally pulled the trigger, overwhelmed both the commanders that were trying to hold that line, and this is a nightmare. Maroon tanks ravaging the base of the Lavender Commander. We've got the yellow ones moving around in the back as well. Tons of pounders, so it's not like we're going to be able to jump on this with sprinters or anything like that. We need some serious firepower to clean all this up. You know what would work pretty well? A couple of bombers. I was just bagging on the defensive bombers, but right in this exact circumstance, I wonder if those bombers would have been a very, very valuable resource right here. Pounder is going to be pretty good against this big ball of blue tanks. Oh, no. And a crazy turnaround with exactly the right strike at exactly the right place. Hornet even taps out of the game as suddenly the medium tanks are everywhere. They're in the back line. They've blown up all the build power. Aphis crumbles. Fusion reactor. Well, left on its last legs. T2 never has a chance to get up and running. Oh, no. A critical oversight right here by the blue team. Didn't realize how big that red ball of tanks was, and the good old-fashioned medium tank ball manages to do it again. Welder's coming out right now. Glad to see it. Gonna be sturdy enough to go up against those medium tanks. Hound's here. Gonna be a decent enough solution, especially in their Gauss form. Their Gauss cannon is particularly good against tanks. Connects relatively frequently, and of course does decent damage. We're still not quite done though, I mean there's still tons of riot tanks moving forward right now. There are hounds coming out of the back line, there's still some medium tanks in the back as well here. Big tear over on the, or on the uh, right hand side as well, looks like a couple of thugs have pushed forward. Medium tanks still in the back, looks like the Lime Green Commander will actually take over for Hornet. Hounds moving around all over the place, I think the hounds have enough here to clean this all up and make it effective once more. But we need to clean up this mess immediately. Once the T2 is out in full swing, the T1 needs to transition off the field here. So sending forward the Wolverine, sending forward the Brood Tanks. The sooner the better. This is a nightmare though. One by one, the players on the blue team are dropping. Medium tank after medium tank, continuing to pull apart the defenses in the back line. Oh no. A severe collapse of morale for the blue team. And just like that, the red team manages to get an advantage across all sides of the field all at once. I don't want to give too much credit here, but I, I, I really do feel like that all sprung off as soon as these fat boys started firing. Yeah, fat boys definitely the, uh, the shot heard around the world. <laughs> the resounding fat boy cannon firing away and eventually obliterating all the T1 over on the right hand side, weakening it up enough for all these units to push in. And then eventually with that crazy medium tank ball from the maroon commander, maroon and yellow both doing a great job of pushing in with those tank balls simultaneously. Ironically, the ideal counter to those medium tank balls would be something like a fat boy. The Tsar is another excellent option. Indeed, we did eventually get one of those out here for Mr. Fortnite. But this is one battle royale that the Powder Blue Commander is, cannot be comfortable playing. Definitely some uh, common tier loot at this point. <laughs> I don't know much about Fortnite. It's been a while. It's been a while. 
pounds here, slowly cleaning up all these medium tanks. That is the superpower of the medium tank. It doesn't do crazy damage. It doesn't move particularly fast. But what it has is the tenacity of a badger, a honey badger. The ability to stay alive regardless of what comes at it. Regardless of what shoots at it. Nice deacons right there from probes. Very, very nice stuff. And in the end, the T2 unable to clean all this up. We were still going for maces here. A little bit of a blunder because the maces are so expensive, it's cutting into your T2 production. Usually you want to switch over to ticks just so you have the vision. Pretty much the only thing that has any real effect as far as the T T2 transition goes into the mid game. But definitely looking at those, uh, definitely looking at those medium tanks and wondering how on earth those went unrecognized for so long. Then again, it is a, a difficult thing to spot. One of the easiest ways to find those is with an air scout. Just realizing, hey, that's a lot of medium tanks right in the middle of the map. Maybe we should set some big AOE firepower over there. But oftentimes, unless you're particularly specced into that sort of direction, there's not a whole lot you can do. I guess that's where teamwork becomes the dream work. The blue team is in shambles. We have the uh, lime green commander controlling most of the map. <laughs> Got the TT lab up and running here. We do have the fat boys continuing to fire away at whatever they feel like. Reducing to rubble all the buildings and whatnot around here. Oh, I'm not sure why, but in my head, the fat boy has always been spitting out of its extra long schnozzle. Oh, it's some serious damage it does. Eventually cleaned up by the big hound ball. But seriously scuffing up a, well, a vast majority of those hounds before they can leave its deadly range. There go the hounds jumping on top of welders. Not particularly their best place. They're uh, meant as more of a hybrid siege assault unit. Not so much a pure assault unit. And just like that, with the Sheldon support, the entire army of the Green Commander will go down. At this point, two commanders versus seven. I'm going to go ahead and speed up this game because I think it's only a matter of time. Before the blue or before the red team manages to close out this game we do have oh no centurions in the back line farming xp off of this uh battery here apparently not enough damage to outpace the construction turrets there we go welders finally jump on top of all this fusion reactors pop medium tanks continuing to roll through the bases Geothermal explodes here as well as the Zars continue to push forward for the Yellow Commander. Unin and Mr. Fortnite, the last two remaining heroes of the blue team, hailing from the Americas with six true skill and 15. Oh, and there we go. Exo Phantom, still in the game as well. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to reside boat. Always a tricky. Mr. Fortnite is spotted. His medium tank ball, the last of the blue heroes. he faces the insurmountable odds. The Tsars breaking his medium tanks with ruthless efficiency. And eventually, our blue leader will go down. Beautiful, beautiful match. Lovely stuff. Excellent fundamentals coming out here today. Love taking a look at these games, especially on maps that we don't cover all too often. I sure hope you enjoyed as well. Don't forget to leave a like down below. It helps these videos, videos propagate through the algorithm's many tendrils. And I will see you in the very next game of Beyond All Reason. Peace out, everybody.